What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video and today we are finally talking free hit drafts for game week 18. I say finally because this is the most asked question I've had so far. When are you making this video? But of course the deadline is not for another week, right? So there's not a massive panic but making the video today, give you my initial thoughts. I split the video into chapters, so there are timestamps if you want to skip ahead to the drafts, but I want to give some thoughts on kind of structure and definite players I would have if I was free hitting this week before we jump into the actual drafts themselves. And I know some people are worried about other content that's coming this week, but there's loads of time until the deadline. Don't worry, this channel will be full, full of videos all the way through uh, to that. I think it's half four on Tuesday. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you're new around here, and let's jump into it. So just some structure thoughts first and basically some thoughts about what you should think about when you're building the team or at least what I've been thinking about when I've been looking at free hit drafts it's worth noting I've not hit the free hit button I'm not trying to pretend that I have I'm either going to free hit a wild card this week I don't see me doing neither at this point uh, but I haven't decided yet and I'll have a video about my current thoughts on my team later on this week but for now this is what I've built for a free hit so I've built quite a few drafts just to kind of play around um, so 3-5-2 seems preferable to me and kind of it links in with the best cheap strikers because when I think about the forward options this week I don't think there's a lot of standout picks right you could say Harry Kane is a standout pick which is fair enough but he's obviously like 11 million. You've got Callum Wilson, although Newcastle and Sheffield United are both bad. They're both bad in defence, but also pretty bad in attack. So how much of a reliable option is Wilson? He probably looks like the best cheap striker. Just because Ollie Watkins plays Spurs, then you go into like Ben Teke for Crystal Palace, Fabio Silva for Wolves. Potentially you could still class uh, Calvert-Lewin as a cheap striker, depending on whether you got him early or not. If you got him at 7 million like me, then okay, he's still quite cheap for you. If not, then he's almost the same price as Lacazette. And I wouldn't say that is cheap. It's obviously cheaper than Kane. But for me, cheap is like 6 to 6.5. So there's hardly... I wouldn't say there's no striker options because I've just listed quite a few. But for me, the best value for money seems to be in midfield uh, and obviously defence as well. Now, I've put 3-5-2 preferable because I just don't think 4-5-1 is as good as 3-5-2. I don't think there's so few striker options that 4-5-1 is better. Um, and when I think about kind of coming down to the last point, triple Man City, triple Arsenal uh, and triple Man United, that's probably what I would do if I was using the free hit this week. Now, obviously, it's difficult to fit in double spurs as well with that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but once I'm trying to fit in those three teams, 4-5-1 doesn't really work out too well. So I've not um, looked at that too much, but obviously we can look at a draft and, uh, and see how that looks. There is obviously a chance to go against the crowd a little bit. Obviously, the ownership levels you're going to see on the FPL site are going to be higher for Game Week 18, right? Because people will free hit players in. Lacazette's ownership might be differential right now, but in the free hit teams, he's probably not. He's going to be quite highly owned, and they'll go back down to be low owned. But there is a chance to go against the crowd a little bit. I mean, even using the free hit is going against the crowd somewhat, right? Because not everyone's going to activate the chip this week. But there are chances, if you've got a hunch or something like that, this is the kind of week to take it. Because if it goes wrong, you get your team back next week anyway. And think about how many times people have tried to put together the perfect team for every week. Like, here's my game week one team. This is going to be the best team. Here's my game week two. Like, kind of like uh, predicting points and stuff like that, right? It's very difficult to nail every single selection right. No one does it. Nobody does it. Out of every kind of site and content creator that tries to predict scores every week, it's very difficult to do. So if you've got a hunch, this is the week to take it, right? If you want to go for a slight punt, if you've got seven and eight, seven or eight players you're really happy with, and you've got three slots, maybe it's a defender, maybe it's a midfielder, maybe it's a forward, you want to go a little bit different, this is the week to do it. And lastly, in terms of the bench, and I realize I'm doing these points in slightly different order, in terms of the bench, is it needed? For most of the players that I would pick... I wouldn't be too concerned about rotation, but if you can get a couple of bench options on there, then great. I wouldn't compromise my preferred first 11 to have a decent bench, and there are some cheap options which will probably get you some points, not probably uh, not probably many, but they will at least play. So Brewster usually gets some kind of minutes. Mitchell, obviously, for Crystal Palace, uh, has played the last two games now. He's only 3.9 million, so there are cheap options. And if you build your first 11 and you've got a lot of money left over, then absolutely... Um, you should put that on the bench. But I wouldn't necessarily um, specifically try and spend money on my bench. So that's some thoughts on structure. Let's take a look uh, at some of the players I would definitely have in every single draft. So yesterday on the guide video I did, I made a short list of players. For this one, 
Um, after building loads of drafts, this is what I would call the definites with a question mark, right? Because it's not necessarily names locked in. They're just positions locked in, right? And that's not to say that these players are essential. It's just that when I build my kind of main draft, these players are always in it, right? No matter how I how I change the draft, how I change the structure, whether I have this goalkeeper or that goalkeeper, these options are always in there, right? So for Arsenal, Sack has been in every draft. He's a very cheap midfielder that enables you to get a lot of big hitters. And when you're looking at like De Bruyne, Fernandez, Rashford, Sterling, Kane, Son. You need some cheap players in there. And let's not forget, a lot of people are packing the defence. Okay, there's no Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold level prices. Not even Chilwell level prices. But Cancelo and Diaz are close to £6 million. Uh, Man United defenders are around the 5.2, 5.3. Mark Kieran Tierney, who a lot of people are going for, uh, is quite expensive as well. Compared to um, you know trying to fit in all those big hitters. So Saka's in. Kieran Tierney's been in pretty much every draft as well. Um, I do think there's the option to go for Rob Holden, for sure, if you want to save some money. Uh, but Tierney has been quite attacking recently. As we saw against West Brom, there's probably a little bit of knee-jerk in that, given the 18 points. And he's not necessarily someone I want to keep in my team long-term for now. Um, but for a free hit team, I would definitely be looking at him. Man United, Bruno Fernandes, no question he's in the team. And then one defensive option. Now, again, this isn't a particular player, but in pretty much every draft, I've had a Man United defender or David De Gea in goal. Uh, I just think Burnley's such a good fixture, right? Man United's defence hasn't been as good so far this year as it was last year, but Burnley's attack is poor, uh, and that should be a good chance of a clean sheet. So a goalkeeper or a defender for sure. There isn't. I've spoke about a triple up. I would like to triple up, but I'm not necessarily um, stuck on where that has to be. So it doesn't have to be Fernandez, Rashford, one defender. It could be Fernandez and two defenders, right? So I'm not stuck on the particular players. But I probably will look to triple on Arsenal, Man United, even though I haven't got three players written down there. And Man City, no question. There is a triple up happening. Kevin De Bruyne is locked in. I think Sterling is playing well right now, but... Um, I think De Bruyne is the number one on the list. Easy. Penalties. He's, I think he's looked good this year. I've been saying it's not a knee jerk. If you watch my channel, you know I love De Bruyne. I only sold him because I didn't think he had a double game week. One defender for sure. Now, which defender that is will change depending on how many defenders I have. For example, if I only have one Man City defender, I'd probably play extra safe and have Diaz in most cases. But if I had two defenders, I might go Cancelo and Stones, right? To get a bit more value, potentially a bit more attacking threat. And I say one more because, again, a bit like Man United, I'm not locked into double defence. It could be De Bruyne and Sterling as a double attack instead. So that's probably the definites there. All players from these teams, everyone else is up for grabs, really. Okay, so let's kick off with the drafts, right? Um, and I will say at the start, right now, because I know it will be mentioned in the comments... I know that not all of you will be able to afford the drafts that I'm doing. The idea is not for you to copy these drafts. It's to give you some thoughts about why I'm building them, to give you some things to think about, right? Some people will have different selling prices, different buying prices for players, and overall different squad value. It's impossible to take into account everybody's squad value, etc., and build drafts, right? So I just have to build the drafts based on my squad value. So that's what you're seeing. The money in the bank is obviously from my team as well. So this is what I'm calling the main draft, right? And what I mean by that that is if i was building a free hit team this week i think the structure and the players would be extremely similar to what you see on screen right now and i would tell you now when i build a team for free hit i'm not too concerned about um having specific players i'm not too concerned about having two spurs players for example right because they play against aston villa i think that would be a tight game i think man city against brighton man united against burnley and arsenal versus palace they're three better fixtures and that is where I would focus most of my money. I'm not too concerned about differentials. I don't care if everyone else selects this team and they're not full of differentials because there's plenty of people not free hitting. So there's still points to be had, right? So I'm not specifically putting differentials in for the sake of it or anything like that. And I will talk about differentials at the end. Uh, but for now, like this is the main draft. So it's got Triple City. Now with this one, and the reason I quite like it is one place where you could potentially go different is double City attack, right? De Bruyne is a definite for me. I've already mentioned that. But Sterling is someone I really like. I think he's playing really well right now. Um, and I think out of all the drafts I've seen, he is a, a chance to go a little bit different without compromising too much. He's a really good player in a really good team who are doing well right now, who are playing the Brighton team, who, if you watch my guides yesterday, defensive stats are quite good, but they're not keeping clean sheets. Now, they are quite a good attacking side, though, Brighton, so they could potentially cause Man City problems, hence going for one defender. But the main reason isn't really concerns over the clean sheet. It's to have Raheem Sterling in as well. So I really like that double up. And then, obviously, Diaz, like I said, if I was going to have one defender... 
it probably would be him, but potentially Cancelo. But I just think if I had Cancelo or Stones and they missed out and Diaz played again, that would really frustrate me because someone from the bench would come in. A lot of people would have double City or even at least one. So Diaz would probably be my safe pick. With Arsenal, Saka again is in every single draft. He just looks like too good of an enabler to turn down right now. In fact, I'd be interested to see people's drafts who don't have Saka. Um, so tweet me there or put a comment below. Let me know what they look like. Tierney in defence. And then Lacazette up front. I'm a little bit concerned is probably the wrong word over Lacazette. But Lacazette's a massive knee jerk, right? He is. I see him in everyone's teams now. But no one was considering recently. He is on good form. Is in the amount of goals he scored. But I just think about Arsenal... They beat Chelsea, really good game, right? No, no one should take that away from them. They only scored one past Brighton, and then they 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 trounced West Brom 4-0, but it's West Brom, so I don't know quite what to make of them, but Crystal Palace defence is pretty bad, and if Lacazette's going to keep playing through the middle, then he looks like quite a good option. So he is in my team as it stands. I've only got one Spurs player. I'm not worried about... Cover like People keep asking me about covering the um, the ownership. I'm not bothered about that. If I don't think it fits into the structure, I've got to hope that my other differentials or my other premium assets do well. So it's all well and good saying I don't have Kane, but I do have Sterling, right? I think a lot of people look at drafts. They always look for the negatives. Who do you not have rather than who you do? So in a straight-up fight, Sterling against Brighton or Kane versus a very good Aston Villa side... I think it's quite close. Kane does have penalties, as we saw against Leeds, that can easily top you up to a good score, right? Because in that match, he only got one assist from open play, but penalties are always a factor. So it is a bit of a risk, but I like Sterling. Bruno Fernandes definitely in there. And then double Man United defence. Now, you can say the defence has been bad this year, and I wouldn't say it's been awful, but it has been worse than the previous year so far. But I think Bailly has come in. If he stays fit, he's a really good player to have alongside Maguire he's quite erratic at times and I always think he's got a card in him yellow or red um, but why he's in a team and why he's fit and playing it's a decent defense for Man United and Burnley's obviously such a good team to target so I've got double Man United defense I don't really know who else would I, I would have that anyway Darlow maybe against Sheffield United could be a good option but if you're giving me David De Gea against Burnley or Carlo against uh, or Darlow I should say not Carl Darlow uh, against Sheffield United then I'm going for David De Gea every time so that's kind of a main draft but let's look at a few others as well so I had to make a double Spurs draft because I know a lot of people are going to want Kane and Son even if it's just to cover the ownership right I'm not saying I would definitely do that but when I put the squad together I mean, it looks quite good, right? Yes, there's some changes in defence, which I'll come on to in a second. But essentially, Rashford and Kane in for Sterling and Lacazette. Now, a lot of people will say that Rashford and Kane is the better option. So I think this is a pretty good squad again. Son, De Bruyne, Fernandes, Saka in as normal. Wilson up front. I've had to compromise a little bit on the bench, right? So I've put Davis in instead of Brewster. But... Again, I'm not expecting too many benchings from this team. And obviously, Mitchell can come in. It's worth noting I've got Douglas in um, the squad because uh, he's 3.8. I think he's the only 3.8 million defender. Basically, when I build my squads, I try and put in the cheapest bench options and then work backwards. I put the cheapest bench options in. I spend as much money as I want to. And then I work out if I can upgrade the bench. With this team, to fit in Kane as well, it does get a bit tight. So if I wanted to make this team, I really should be thinking about doing it now. Um, I've still got the triple Man City covered, but instead of Sterling, I've gone for double defence. And because I've got two defenders, I guess I've taken a little bit more of a risk, potentially, by going Cancelo and Stones. Um, obviously, Game Week 18 is still a little bit of a way away. Um, there has been positive COVID tests at Man City. And potentially some of the players that are isolating or have tested positive will be back by Game Week 18. But I do think there is a chance, even if Walker was back that he doesn't get straight back into the team. Not because he's a bad player, but because we don't know what his recovery is going to be like from testing positive, will Edison come back in, etc. And Cancelo's been so good, and he's barely missed a game for like 10, 11, 12 game weeks now. Uh, I really want him, because I do think he's massively attacking, and there is a big score waiting to happen. We just haven't seen it yet. Like a 12 to 15 pointer is not out of the question, I think, for Cancelo this week. And then John Stones is such good value that he's in as well. Tierney and, and David De Gea could be Leno and Maguire, right? That would be a little bit cheaper, I think Maguire's the same price as Tierney, but Leno's cheaper than David De Gea. So that would give me a little bit of money if I wanted to upgrade um, the bench in some ways. But that's kind of the double Spurs team. What what do I think of Spurs? I kind of talked about this yesterday, that Villa fixture. I think it's going to be a tight game, right? I don't think that because Spurs scored three against Leeds that we should start um, looking into them as this big attacking team. So I'm just not sure they are. I'm not sure they are. They obviously have quality, right? If Kane and Song can do something... 
then they're looking really good. But the rest of the team, I don't massively see where the goals are coming from. We saw Bergwijn um, spur a few, forget the pun, forgive the pun there, that wasn't planned, but spur a few chances um, against Leeds. So, you know, on another day, maybe Song gets a bigger haul and Bergwijn gets some points as well. But I just think that Villa defence is good. And I, Man United... They caused Villa a few problems. Villa caused them a few problems. It was 2-1. I could see a similar score for, for Spurs. I'm not even saying Spurs would win 2-1. They might lose 2-1 because Villa are just that good this season. So double Spurs I like. And sometimes you look at a squad and you just like it, right? And I do quite like this squad. But I'm just not sure Son and Kane is the best place to spend the money. Uh, and I feel like maybe having Sterling is potentially a slightly uh, more interesting option, right? That Brighton game could be quite open. But there is definite value in the Man City defence. And overall, again, there's not really too many differences before the first squad. I've just moved some of the defenders around. And Kane and Rashford in for Lacazette and Sterling instead. So I'll let you in on a little secret if you're still watching at this point. So when I usually structure these videos and put them together, I'll think about all the different drafts and who I would actually go for. I don't usually put together drafts that um, I'm not really interested in, unless, for example, I know people are going to want to hear about them, like Double Spurs. And I mentioned 4 5 one when I was doing my structure bit at the start, when I was talking about who the best cheap strikers were, um, 3 5 two, whether to go big on the bench or whatever. Right At the start, I was talking about that. And I mentioned that people were putting 4 5 ones together and that I would do a draft. Then I realized I hadn't done one. So I went away and I thought, I'm never going to like this 4-5-1 draft. And I've put it together, and I really like it, right? It's actually quite good, I think. For me, it's got 0.9 million in the bank. So it's got a bit more than my other drafts. So I could upgrade the bench potentially a little bit. I could maybe move some money around. Like, for example, Stones could be Diaz as it stands, right? So I could go for him instead of um, Stones and have Diaz and Cancelo, which is pretty nice. And Tierney and Maguire and still have an Arsenal goalkeeper in goal. So, again, I've still got the triple Arsenal, triple City, and triple Man United. But, again, I've moved around the positions a little bit. Kane is up front on his own. Again, that could be Lacazette. It could be Wilson. You could then put that money um, in elsewhere instead. Obviously, one player I've not had in any of these drafts is Aubameyang. And he is the kind of player that will do really well in this in this game week and we all realize or all think why the hell did we not consider him but he's 11.3 million now so you could have you know instead of Kane and Saka you could use that 0.9 to maybe have Watkins and Aubameyang but I just don't think that's the best way um, of using the funds so Kane up front on his own and then the five is obviously Rashford, De Bruyne, Fernandez, Son and Saka uh, which is pretty similar to most of the midfielders I've had and obviously with 4-5-1 Son and Kane do come into play the other midfielders that I've not really put into drafts and not really considered too much is Grealish. I think he could do well if you're stuck for budget. Like if you've got a 7.5 or 7.6, whatever price he is now, slot, then I do think he's a really good option. Because if Spurs, if that game's going to be close, right, and Son and Kane could get something or Grealish could get something, like there's no reason that Grealish won't be in the point. So I do like Grealish. I've not gone for Zaha because I just think I would back the Arsenal defence over the Crystal Palace attack. Um, and so that's the midfield. Son and Kane are still in there. So for a lot of people that want to fit Kane and Son in, maybe this is the best way to do it. Um, and really then, it's just one of these defenders, you can pick out whichever one it is because you can go and restructure however you want. It's, instead of Tierney, Maguire or Cancelo, you could put that down to a 3.9 like Mitchell and upgrade Brewster to Wilson. That's only, the, the only real change apart from some of the players that I've moved around. I would always back, I think, Leno against Crystal Palace instead of Darlow against Sheffield United. I've kind of already talked about that a little bit. You could go Darlow if you wanted to spread the risk a little bit, if you didn't want double Arsenal defence, but I don't think it's a bad move. So that's the 4-5-1. Usually, for a normal team, I would never go 4-5-1 because, as you can see, you've got to have Brewster and Davis on the bench. They barely get any minutes between them. And obviously, in this one, I've got Douglas on the bench. I could go a little bit more expensive. But it just puts too many, too much money spread across too many positions that if you want to then restructure to a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3, it's a lot of money to be moving about. But on a free hit team, you don't have that worry because you get your normal team back. So I don't think it's a bad option, to be honest. You're literally backing a defender with clean sheets and attacking returns over Callum Wilson. And that's pretty much the decision to be made here. So if you want to go 4-5-1, I think I'd structure it something like that. But there are obviously changes you can make if you wanted to go cheaper than Kane, for example. You could put more money elsewhere in the team. So I thought I'd talk about some differentials as well. Let me just say right now, this is not a structure that I would have in place. Like, if I was having some of these differentials, I wouldn't also have the rest of them. This is just to put them in to show you, right? So this is not really a draft. Now, Martial is a player that I didn't have on my shortlist yesterday when I did my guide video. A lot of people put that in the comments. 
I'm not really considering him because Cavani is banned for three games. He's just served one of them in the league. He's going to serve the other two in the FA Cup and the EFL Cup. So he'll be back for the Burnley game. And at that point, Martial would have played quite a few minutes. So there is a chance that Martial misses out. But whether Martial or Cavani, if you can work out who's going to play based on the cup minutes or what Solskjaer says or if there's an injury, whichever one of those two you think will start is probably a really good option for the double or for the blank game week 18 as well, right? Because they're playing Burnley. If you're going for Rashford and Fernandez, then Martial or Cavani, whoever plays up front, is also an option as well. Um, I should also say, these are all differentials under 10% ownership for the whole of fpl but obviously top 10k ownership will be different top 100k ownership will be different and also like i said at the start the ownership levels for these players will be much higher at least for some of them uh, in game week 18 because people would have free hit them in so tierney is not going to be a differential i'll tell you that now but for overall he is holding is obviously an option if you want to go a bit cheaper in the arsenal defense i spoke about that already stones is quite a bit of a differential and i do think even in the blank for free hitters, most people will go towards Cancelo and Diaz for kind of safety and attacking returns. But for 5 million, Stones is a good enabler. Um, Regulon, so not really talked too much about Spurs defence. If you back them to keep a clean sheet against Aston Villa, to keep out the likes of Watkins, El Ghazi and Grealish, then he's an option at 5.6. Quite expensive, but if you had that kind of money to play with, it could be him. Tellers and Luke Shaw over like McGuire. All the main United defenders, to be honest, are under 10%. But Tellers and Luke Shaw in particular are really low. Again, a bit like Marshan Cavani, you're not always 100% sure who will start. So it could be Tellers, it could be Shaw. We'll have to wait and see what happens over the cup games and, and then try and work it out from there. But whoever plays left back for Man United could be a bit of a differential. They're only, I think they're owned by less than 1.5% overall. I don't see them being in many free hit teams either. When Tellers is on the pitch, he takes a lot of set pieces off Fernandez as well. So that's something worth thinking about. And Shaw does sometimes take corners from the left side as well. So again, a uh, few, few set pieces off Fernandez, if not um, if not too many. Tross off for Brighton, but then you'll bet you're backing against Man City. He is very cheap, though, so you could look at him. If you wanted to go for a cheaper Spurs attacker, Bergwijn's usually starting in that right-hand role. Although, like I said, most of the goals for it go through Son and Kane. So you are uh, that's a bit of blind faith, I think, going for, for Bergwijn. Watkins is still pretty low-owned. I don't expect him to be that highly owned against um, Spurs on free hit teams. I think he's better than his FPL points suggest. I think he gets into a lot of good positions. He's just not putting the ball in the back of the net right now, which, yes, is a frustration. I get it if you're an owner. Um, but it's good that he's getting into those positions, and he has shown in previous games that he can finish. And then lastly, the Everton Wolves game, I've barely spoken about. I've not had any players in any of the drafts that I've made. Traore, very low on. He started a lot. I think he started like nearly 8 out of 10, I think, 8, eight out of the last 10 games. Just got his first attack in return, so maybe this is the start um, of doing something better. 6.1 million. Neto is obviously an option as well in that team. Maybe if Fabio Silva you wanted to put someone cheap up front. Neither Wolves nor Everton are really keeping that many clean sheets. So that is potentially the outlier fixture where I don't see too many people going for their players. There could be some differential points to have. So Traore, like I said, Neto, maybe even Calvert-Lewin. I think most people will have sold Calvert-Lewin or will free hit him out. I don't see many people going for him. And with Rodriguez back, Richarlison back, it could spell better things for him. So lots of players to think about. That's a lot of the differentials that are owned by under 10%. But I'm sure there's many more. So let me know in the comments below. So there we go. Hopefully you found that useful and entertaining. You know me. I don't do those short videos. I like to give my thoughts on every single possible permutation. But hopefully the chapters help for those of you that didn't want to watch the whole thing. And for those of you who did, I hope you enjoyed it. Please do give it a like if you didn't. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. And lastly, if you want to support me and the channel a little bit further, I do have have patreon link in the description below there's loads of perks and benefits over there thank you to everyone that's already signed up i will just bring them all up on screen right now so everyone that signs up goes up on the legends wall there's slack access whatsapp access early team reveals and stuff like that so when i finally decide to free hit wildcard or whatever it might be uh, i'll put that up on patreon first and then obviously i'll get a video out uh, on the main channel to talk through my thoughts as well so if you want to support me on there there is a link in the description below thank you to everyone that's already signed up and there we go i'll leave it there tomorrow i'm going to do a wildcard draft video because i have been heavily thinking about wildcard and i do think it's a better option than people are giving it credit for but there are obviously some pros and some cons so i'll do that tomorrow then i might give you um, a bit of a video on my chip strategy thoughts and then any other video ideas that you want to see before tuesday let me know in the comments below i will leave it there hit that like button hit that subscribe button and i'll catch you again soon